see if he pops up. Well, hello there. Hello. I've seen asked on multiple boards and Facebook groups the difference between a URGI upper from Geisley and a Geisley Super Duty in 14 and a half. Now both rifles are made by Geisley. While there's a lot of similarities, there's many more differences between the two rifles. So there are considerable differences to take into account when making a purchase. So I'm gonna take you through the similarities and the differences so you can make an informed decision. Yes, yes. There's also been multiple iterations of the Geisley URGI. I don't have all of them, but I'll take you through the changes best I can with the newest iteration that Geisley's making completely in-house. Thank you. Similarities is the shortest list, so we'll tackle that first. Both barrels are 14 and a half inch pinned well to 16 inch at a minimum with a one and seven twist cold hammer forged chrome line barrel with a 0 0.750 gas block journal which is the thickness of the barrel at the gas block and the corresponding gas block size for those that are confused and they both have the mark 16 rail though there are differences in the mark 16 rail that's where the similarities stop changing gears to the differences now we can start highlighting where you're gonna see both characteristic differences and performance differences. Super duper! That's nice! Way to go! Neat okay! Yes, boy! All URGIs to include the 10.3 and 11.5 and inch are gonna come with the Surefire four prong muzzle device. This is going to also have one of the better seals out of the Surefire muzzle devices with the Labyrinth seals, and it's a decent flash hider and it does have some ring. So those are things to consider. Based on your iteration of Geisley Super Duty, it's either going to come with a Surefire three prong, a Surefire CTN, or the Surefire flash hider. Regardless of your iteration, all three muzzle devices will have the Geisley nano weapon coating, which is designed to help with carbon buildup and carbon lock with a suppressor. And of course, all the Surefire devices included on the Geisley rifles are designed to interface with a Surefire suppressor. So the RC2 full size, the Mini 2, or the Micro, or whatever the short one's called. The next difference you're going to see is the barrel profile itself. The URGI being a government contract barrel is going to have a government profile. So that's a government profile where it's thicker after the gas block with a one and seven twist chrome line barrel and again the 0 0.750 gas block journal. It's also going to have a 0 0.076 gas port size. I don't know if that's standard across all 14.5s or if it's just for the URGI. I'm sure there's some nerds in the comments that'll jump in there and let me know. Conversely, the Super Duty is going to have a Geisley profile barrel, which is a barrel that has a progressive taper that starts thick towards the barrel nut and the receiver, and as it progresses forward, tapers down in density till it gets to the front. It still maintains a .750 gas block journal. The barrel is also still cold hammer forged, one and seven twist, chrome lined. So while those similarities are there, the barrel profile is a little thinner towards the front end of the gun, but once again, it doesn't get pencil barrel thickness. It does taper slightly below the collar where you're gonna put the muzzle device, but not by much. All Geisley barrels, even the new URGI barrels, are going to be marked with a Geisley G on it because they're making it in-house now. Based on which iteration of URGI you have, you'll either have a Daniel Defense barrel or you'll have a Geisley barrel, but the Geisley barrels 
though they're made in house, are not the Geisley profile barrels. They're still government profile barrels. I know there's some question as to whether the new URGIs have a government barrel profile and whether it's built like Daniel Defense to handle M855A1. But Geisley says it on their website, and if you look at the new barrel profiles on the new Geisleys with the G, if you look at the new URGIs that do have the G on the barrel, you can see clearly that it's a government profile because it doesn't shrink down like the Geisley profile barrels do. And you also get, from what they're alleging, the same metallurgy to help you with M855A1. So even though Geisley's making them in-house, you don't lose anything that the Daniel Defense barrel gave you in the first place. And I believe Geisley's doing that to control the quality a little bit better. Although I've never had any accuracy issues or consistency issues or anything in any of the six URGIs I fired before Geisley started making them in-house. So take that for what it's worth. All right, gas blocks. Based on your iteration of URGI, you'll have an older gas block and the newer gas blocks are black in color on the Geisley barrel URGIs. And the SDs also have the black in color gas block. I'm told that those are investment cast. Boo! And the previous iterations weren't. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I do know the SDs have investment cast gas blocks, but good luck getting it off. Geisley uses green Loctite, which is a bedding agent. They also use two screws that have Loctite on them and they pin the gas block as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. That gas block's not coming off unless you have extreme amounts of force trying to get that, <laughs> that gas block off. Come on, Cap. <sighs> Same thing with these. I haven't found them to be leaky boys like the gas blocks that you used to buy before. You can denote the new gas blocks by the new color. And just because you have a silver gas block doesn't mean it'll leak necessarily. I think some of those people didn't install them fully, so there's definitely items to consider for people making those complaints. But the gas blocks are different. Again, that's going to be based on your iterations. So Daniel Barrel, you're almost certainly going to have a silver gas block, so on and so forth, until you get to the Geisley Barrels. And then the Super Duty has the newest Geisley gas block. All right, gas ports, I already covered it. The URGI has a .076 gas port size. That's not to be confused again with the gas block journal, which is 0 .750. That's the thickness of the barrel at the gas port. The gas port itself is the hole in the barrel that interfaces with the gas block. So URGI has a 0 .076, which is within spec. That's about where you want it to be. The larger the gas port size in the barrel, the more aggressive it's going to be and different barrel lengths require different gas port sizes for lock times and all sorts of other good stuff in there. If you have, say, a 14.5 with a .080, that's too big, it's going to be frustrating to shoot and it's going to have very harsh recoil. The gas port size conversely on the Super Duty is 0 .075, which is slightly smaller. You can also feel that when shooting if you have very sensitive shoulders. I really don't. So I don't experience any functional difference between the Super Duty and the URGI. However, people have said it's much more gas efficient and it's smoother. I can't shoot the difference, quite frankly, and I fire these back to back, but as the manufacturers say, the end user will ultimately be the determining factor in that. So if you want it as tight as possible out of the Geisley offerings, then the Super Duty has the 0 .075 gas port with the 0 .750 gas block journal. All right, next to exterior coatings. So you're gonna find that the URGI is always gonna have a mil spec heavier layered phosphate on there whereas the Geisley Super Duties have a mixture of phosphate or black oxide based on which iteration you purchased. 
I can't tell you when, and it's not like they have date codes or serial number runs where they said that. Geisley makes a lot of changes as they go. So it's hard for me to point to a certain batch and say, this is definitely gonna have the black oxide finish. What it's gonna come down to is you being able to look at the barrel and say, oh look, a black oxide finish. Look at this. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Wow. But Geisley has since heard the complaints from the community and gone back to a phosphate finish on their barrels for the Super Duties. So now, while there are differences in some of the iterations of the Super Duty, they both have the same coating now. That was a lot of words to describe something simple. All right, next is gonna be rail interface. So the URGIs are going to have anti-rotational tabs and no key into the receiver. So there's no top key cut going from the rail into the receiver like they would in HK or the Super Duty. The Super Duty, on the other hand, has the key cut into the receiver and no rotational tabs on the side. So there's much more rigidity associated with that and this isn't gonna turn at all. You also don't have to mess with any frustrating screws or make sure this is perfectly aligned. You just do it and it's fine. Okay. Okay, bolt carrier groups based on iteration. The first two iterations, I wanna say first two, there's not really a whole lot of difference between the first run of the URGIs and the second. I can show you how to tell in a second. But let's finish this list and then I'll show you. The bolt carrier groups, the Daniel bolt carrier group, very standard mil spec bolt carrier group. It's magnetic particle inspected and high pressure tested. Standard mil spec bolt carrier group. The Super Duty is going to have the reliability enhanced bolt carrier group. I just shot this so it's a little wet. But it has all those enhancements that I've gone over in other videos. The new URGIs, the newest iteration of the URGIs with the Geisley barrels are gonna come with the reliability enhanced bolt carrier group, which I feel is a massive upgrade. All right, the receivers. So you'll notice on this receiver and the Super Duty receiver that there are squares indicating that these were made by Brass Aluminum Forging Enterprises, as indicated by that tiny little square. And that wraps up all the boring technical spec differences. Now the way to tell which run of URGI you have, mine was the very first run, so you'll see a part number on the rail instead of an NSN. So part number 05-650-Sierra. You'll see the NSN on the side. The NSN is 1005-01-672-4797. It's a lot of stuff, but that makes it official so all the cloners can get excited. Actually, actually, allow me to correct you. I happen, I happen to be an expert on this subject. For the sake of brevity, we're gonna blaze through the last three portions. Shootability and maneuverability between the two is very similar. You do have the government profile and the four prong is much longer than the flash hider. Although again, based on iteration, which I'm getting sick of saying, <laughs> the three prong is just as long as the four prong, but the flash hider and the CTN are much shorter. So effectively, it's same, same. This comes out to 16 and a half inches and the Super Duty with the flash hider is gonna come in at 16.3 inches, which means you can mark yourself safe from the ATF kicking your door down and shooting your dog. Despite the gas port size differences, they both shoot near identical. I didn't experience any differences in recoil impulse or any of that stuff. I will say though, both my buddy's URGI and my URGI have upgraded the buffer to an H2 from an H1. If you have an H1 in your URGI, shooting it unsuppressed will be fine, but when you shoot it suppressed, the H2 is a requirement. The Geisley Super Duties come with an H2, so you don't have to worry about that. And I think Geisley listened to some of the feedback and adapted to the necessary changes they had to make to make the gun shoot smoother. So I think all URGIs now come with the H2. I might be wrong about that, but all the Super Duties for sure come with an H2. All right, cost. 
based on how much of a cheap ass you want to be with your lower lower internal parts and all that other stuff, you can build a URGI cheaper versus purchasing a Super Duty rifle that's complete. You can buy the Super Duty uppers, you're gonna be comparable in price there, but building a URGI is going to be cheaper based on how you do it. Now, if you use a SOT mod and the proper parts and a Geisley trigger and all that other stuff, you're gonna come out to close to, if not identical price to the Super Duty. Okay. So in closing, both are very similar in a lot of ways and if you shoot them back to back you probably won't experience any discernible difference that's going to make you gravitate towards one or the other with the exception of course of the Geisley's factory trigger that's going to come in the Super Duties. You can usually get a Black Friday package with an SSA or an SSAE and the URGI upper with the extras that it comes with which is great but the SSAEX or the SSAX are phenomenal triggers. They're going to be really hard to battle, but honestly, if you shoot this back to back with this, the pull weight's the same. There's just one small, tiny little piece that's got a different coating on it, and the trigger bow is different on the SD, so that's where you really come into it. As far as suppressor use, if you're running full auto or you're going to cook the hell out of your barrel, definitely go with the URGI. The slightly thicker barrel profile is going to help with heat. Although I haven't had any issues with accuracy or heat stringing with either of these. Additionally, running suppressed, I trust both of these to run suppressed. And again, no accuracy issues or performance issues with either of them. They both run. I pair them with Magpul magazines or HK magazines or even old aluminum GI magazines and they run just fine. So ultimately, it's dealer's choice and what you're looking for. If you purchase the Geisley, Super Duty and a URGI, both 14 and a half. You outfitted them identically with receivers, butt stocks, pistol grips, all that stuff. Then maybe the Super Duty will be a little lighter on its feet based on the barrel profile. I really do trust these Geisley profile barrels. The taper isn't so much that it goes down to a .625, so I trust it with a suppressor. It's still a .750, which is my personal requirement, and it shoots lights out. Both of these have been very accurate with whatever I put in them. I've never had an issue at all. So highly recommend both guns, but there are some differences that some people are gonna like or not like, and it gets into the minutia, as some people like to say, but all the technical geeks can nerd out at the differences and all that, but Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, it's picking between a small series of feature sets that you prefer over the other, and it's really up to you, but I have both, I shoot both, I love both. Easy day. As always, thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful, and take care out there.